Greetings and praise the Lord. Bless everybody out there on Facebook and on Zoom. This is Saturday School at the Refuge Temple and Sea Bible Institute. We are embarking on the next series of Saturday School entitled Things of the Spirit. This is our kickoff to that series, and we just want to come live just to, cap this, or to launch this series. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we're just so thankful for the opportunity to share today. I ask your great blessings upon us as we embark in this great topic of things of the spirit. As we explore your word, to answer questions, to refortify our relationship with you, uh, to grow in the knowledge of your will and your purpose. Oh God, as you lead us, guide us, and direct us, uh, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Bless every student and potential student, oh God, of the word of God. As we embark this year on the serious subject of discipleship, just ask, Lord, that your people would have a new hunger and a new thirst to learn, to grow through the scriptures and through the word of God. Bless everyone who is hearing now and those who will hear the rewind. We just ask your great blessings upon us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I stated, we are in the series, Things of the Spirit. Allow me to get to where I need to get on Zoom. I sincerely apologize for the delay. I had some technical issues that we, I had to work through. So please thank you for your patience. Things of the Spirit, what is this going to be all about? Well, this will be an introduction to that. I'll share my screen with you all and get started. We just finished um, the subject dealing with prayer and I highly encourage anyone who wants to have a stronger prayer life to look at that series. You can get it on the Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute page. Also, before we start, I want to encourage you and to petition you to follow us just go to Facebook, type in Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute, and we should come up. If you follow us, you will get notifications when we go live or when we publish. We have a post every morning called Bible Facts, and we launch that around 6 o'clock a.m., so you will get that. We also have Wednesday Wisdom, which is a noonday post coming from one of the wisdom books. For those who are not familiar with that terminology, the wisdom books are Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and Job. We try to come through one of those scriptures just to encourage somebody and to encourage thought into the word of God as it applies to our everyday life. And on Saturdays, we have Saturday school at the Bible Institute. Usually it is a post at 11 a.m. Generally, we just look at a series of topics. Most of these up to this point have been generated by yours truly, but I certainly want to encourage everybody who has a thought, a question, to please post at the Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute page, and we will make sure that we schedule something in this series to deal with whatever that question may be. Things of the Spirit. This is episode one, the introduction. Bear with me for a moment. I 
in the next eight to 10 weeks, we will focus on the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is just one of various terms used to describe the Spirit of God and how he relates with us. Other words used in the scriptures are Holy Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead, and many others. When we use these different terms, we're talking about the self-same Spirit. Us who have received the Holy Ghost or are waiting to receive the Holy Ghost. For us, it is pretty simple. It's not necessarily easy to receive the Holy Ghost, but our grasp of the concept is quite simple. Jesus promised it under certain conditions, and we feel that we've met those conditions or we are in the process of meeting those conditions. So one at one moment, in one instance somewhere, we know that we either were or did receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some of us even imagine where we would be at. Some of us imagine the scenario. And for some of us, it worked out just that way. And for other people, it did not. But in either case, the concept is very simple. However, the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer is much more involved and it takes a level of understanding in order to really benefit from all that God has done through his work in us through the Holy Spirit. We will dive into the scriptures that teach about the nature of the Spirit and how it relates to the church. Bear with me a moment here. Finally started one at work. I want to propose some initial questions. These are questions that you may have had. I certainly have over the years, starting with my initial walk with God when the gospel was presented to me and later on. One question is, is the Holy Ghost distinct from the Father and the Son? Much of the church world is Trinitarian and they believe that God somehow is three persons and they are distinct. We must explore this, we must answer this question because it is critical, it is vital. Is every believer required to receive the Holy Ghost as part of salvation? This is also a critical question. For some do not believe this. Some believe that the Holy Ghost is just a special gift given to those who God has called to some special service, much like the Old Testament. But however, this is not true in the New Testament age. The promise is that all would receive who believe on the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is the Holy Spirit all there is to salvation? Oftentimes you'll hear, particularly in, in my circles and Pentecostal and apostolic faith that when somebody receives the Holy Ghost that they say I'm saved but is the Holy Ghost all there is to salvation or is it just a part within the process does one need to be filled with the Holy Ghost to be part of the church is every believer required to speak in other tongues as a sign of the initial infilling of the spirit? Also, is it the only evidence? 
Are there other signs? Does the baptism of the Holy Spirit matter more than the water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? How is the Holy Ghost tied into eternal life? Now that I have been filled with the Spirit, what should I expect to happen now? We will propose many more questions as the weeks progress. These are just some initial thoughts and questions. We receive the Holy Ghost by obedience to the gospel message. Why do I need to know more about this subject? I'm glad you asked. One of the reasons is we need to grow in the knowledge of God. Part of this is growing in our knowledge of the spirit of Christ that dwells in us. In order for us to become true living disciples of Jesus Christ. Number two, we need to understand what belongs to us through the spirit. We need to know what God wants us to know concerning the ministry of the Holy Ghost in us and the Church of Christ. Not what we think we want to know about it or what others have told us, but he wants us to know what he wants us to know. Glory to God. Understand the promises tied to the infilling of the Holy Ghost. This will help those who are still waiting to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, but also it's going to help others navigate through their understanding of the workings of the Holy Ghost. Because contrary to some of our beliefs, the Holy Ghost is not our spirit. It is God's spirit. And because it's God's spirit, the Holy Ghost has been working in many different places in manifold ways throughout history. You'll find this going back to creation in Genesis, all the way through the history of mankind and even before then, that God's spirit has been actively involved in many things concerning history, concerning creation, and concerning the salvation of humanity. And number five, to know what belongs to us. I'm just bringing this up again for emphasis. It is so vital that we understand what belongs to us and much of what belongs to us is tied into our understanding of the Holy Spirit. This thought may be the emphasis of this entire series is to know what belongs to us through the Holy Ghost. This is our thematic scripture for the entire series. First Corinthians chapter two, verse six, through verse 12, reading from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the man, heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
I only put one phrase in bold print, but I probably should have put that last verse as well. It says the deep things of God. It says for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Verse number 12, I'll also repeat. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. One of the primary ways that God communicates his promises and our access to him is through the Holy Ghost. And even the Holy Scriptures cannot substitute this. Even great teaching, great preaching, having a great pastor at your disposal will not substitute for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. But I got good news about this. Everybody who believes on the gospel of Jesus Christ is promised the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the critical question is not whether he will give us the Holy Spirit, but the critical question is whether we believe the gospel. And we will tie that into this series as well, because as we stated in our first um, series of mess, uh, a post dealing with the doctrine of salvation, many of us do not even understand salvation itself. And the simple gospel message says presented by the apostles was Jesus first started to communicate. So if we understand the gospel, I believe it will be much easier for us to receive the Holy Ghost and to understand the promises that are tied to the infilling of his spirit. And the Holy Ghost is a hymn. This is Jesus. I know that often in the scriptures, it could be confusing concerning the terminology that's given for different aspects of God. But there is only one God. There only ever was one God. And there will only ever be one God. And he is not separate. He cannot separate himself in any manner. Um, but what he can do is give access to himself. And that's what he is really doing when he is filling us with his spirit, is that we now have access to his spirit. And much of this relationship cannot be adequately described by language. It has to be experienced. The glory to God. We have enough word, we have enough scripture, though, that we should have a good enough understanding in order to really take advantage of what God has given us in this dispensation. What do we hope to learn? These will be the areas of focus. There may be more. This is just a way to categorize for this series, but there are many other ways you could express this. You have the promise of the Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Number four, the fruit of the Spirit, operation of the Spirit, and spiritual gifts. We won't necessarily go in this order but this is the way that we're outlining the series and tying all these different aspects into the things of the spirit. Here's our schedule. We are in the introduction today. Next week, we will deal with the promise of the spirit. Then we will look at the gift of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then we will have the operation of the Spirit, part one. 
and part two. The fruit of the spirit that will also contain two parts. And then we will have a three part teaching on the spiritual gifts. And at the end, we will have a poll um, and we'll discuss those results. And then I'm also thinking about having either a round table or a platform discussion concerning the Holy Spirit. So please stay tuned for that. Just for reference, these are the assigned scriptures and these are not all that we could look at. These are the ones that I am primarily going to teach from. I will state them for everybody. Joel chapter two, verse 28. Ezekiel the prophet, chapter 37, verse one through four. St. John, chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 9. St. John, 16, 6 through 14. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 4 through 8. Acts, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Chapter 2, 38 through 39. Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 48. Acts chapter 4, verse 24 through 33. The entire chapter of Romans 8. 1 Corinthians 12 in its entirety. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 through 16. Galatians 5, verse 6 through verse 26. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. First John chapter 5, verse 6 through verse 8. And many others as we go along. This is a conclusion of the introduction into the things of the spirit. I hope you join us each Saturday. Most of the time we will send out a post with a video discussing the topic for the week. This is Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute located in Burlington, North Carolina. We are a ministry of Refuge Temple Church Catch us each Saturday on Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute Facebook page. If you would like us to cover a topic or answer a question, please submit it to the Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute Facebook page or on Twitter at Refuge NCB. That's the Twitter handle. And we will make sure that we put your question out there or we will put the topic in the schedule for future posting. God bless you. Uh, thank you for your time. Just praying that you will continue to be a lifelong learner of the word of God, that you would become a true disciple of Jesus Christ, if not already, and to grow as a disciple of you all. Just praying God's blessings upon all. In Jesus' name. God bless everybody. Till the next time. Shalom.